Welcome to Don't At Me. I'm George from F1 Reverse, and these are my hot takes on the impending 2024 F1 silly season. Let's get started. So, I'm sure you already know, but 2024 silly season is going to be wild. There is half the grid out of contract, and I can't remember a silly season like this. I'm sure there's going to be crazier ones, but this is Don't At Me, so don't at me. When you have this many drivers out of contract, trying to work out what's going to happen is like trying to work out what's happening at Red Bull right now. It's actually just impossible. Which is why I wanted to give it a go and give you all something to have a go at me about. So F1 driver contracts are obviously for a set amount of time, or at least that used to be the case. Daniel Ricciardo, Lewis Hamilton, Nick De Vries, and everyone's favourite son of a Russian oligarch, Nikita Mazepin, have proved them wrong. That like F1 contracts are just actually for nothing anymore, apparently. So on that note, let's go down the list of drivers who will probably still be at their current team in 2025 because they have a contract, but again, those contracts potentially mean nothing. So the first one is obviously Max Verstappen. He's got a contract till 2028 with Red Bull. Um, but as I've said already, trying to work out what's happening at Red Bull is impossible, and he could leave and go anywhere, or he might just quit F1 and be a full-time sim racer because he looks so much happier there, doesn't he? He could go to Mercedes. I've seen that kind of spoken about a lot. I've seen Aston Martin spoken about. Um, but for now, I'm going to assume he's going to stay at Red Bull. I think if Red Bull had the choice, as in the Red Bull board, not Red Bull, the team run by Christian Horner, yeah, if the Red Bull board had the choice, I think they'd keep Max Verstappen over Christian Horner. So let's say he's going to stay there for now. There's the Ferrari team, which is going to be Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc. Um, of every driver lineup on the grid at the moment, that team is like nailed on. There's no way that's going to change at all. So that's the Ferrari team for next season. Then there's George Russell at Mercedes. He seems pretty happy there, especially now Lewis Hamilton's going. Mercedes is very much like his team. There's no reason he would leave. His contract does end at the end of 2025, and there's like a world where maybe something changes there. But for now, he's definitely going to be there next year. Then there's the McLaren lineup. Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri, they're both contracted till at least 2026, with Lando's probably going longer than that. There's a world where maybe Red Bull tempt Lando away. Um, it would probably cost them tens of millions of dollars, but they could do it. Could Oscar Piastri be tempted away? Probably again, but I don't think anyone would go for it. He's only in his second season. He's looked good, but I think he needs a bit longer to prove himself, and I don't think there's a bigger team than McLaren who would come for him, and he wouldn't leave for a smaller team. So he's not going anywhere. The final one is Alex Albon, who's contracted just for next year. Um, he's been linked absolutely everywhere across the grid, like every team I can think of he's been linked to. So he is contracted. He is definitely part of a list of is contracted but might not stay. More on that later. So that's seven drivers who are guaranteed a seat on the grid for 2025, and most of them will probably be at the team they are at the moment, maybe. But with eight teams in need of a driver, who's going to be available for them to choose from? This is where things get really stupid. Anand, show me the grid. We have Red Bull Sergio Perez, Ferrari's Carlos Sainz, Aston Martins, Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll, Alpine's Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly, Williams Logan Sargent, RB's Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda, Sauber's Valtteri Bottas and Joe Guan Yu, and Haas's Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hülkenberg. And that, my friends, is a lot of drivers that could be redundant at the end of the year. Now, I know everyone is always desperate to give young drivers a go, um, but 13 spots is a lot to fill, and if you took the top 13 F2 finishers from 2024 and put them into F1 for 2025, that would be a massive mistake. If you thought that 8 out of 22 cars finishing the 1998 Belgian Grand Prix was bad, think again. If you don't get that joke, go watch the highlights of that race, by the way. Incredible. Utter carnage. While the top 13 F2 drivers aren't going to come and some of the current F1 drivers are going to stay, there is also a backlog of F2 winners and like ex-F2 graduates who are definitely deserving of a seat. So we're not going to see another like Nikita Mazepin promoted fiasco 
we're avoiding that. All good. There is Ollie Behrman, who is probably guaranteed a seat. There is Andrea Kimi Antonelli, um, who looks really good and there's been a lot of talk about him. Um, but also it's Toto Wolf doing most of the talking up. And considering the last two drivers he championed were Nick De Vries, who got fired after 10 races, and Mick Schumacher, but only after he got fired by Haas for costing them millions of dollars in repairs every season, I'm going to wait until I see the proof in the pudding for Antonelli. The Alpine Junior driver, Jack Doohan, he's probably got a pretty good chance. Um, there's the Sauber Junior, Theo Poucher, he's also got a good shout. There's the other Mercedes Junior driver, Frederick Vesti, who has kind of been forgotten about. Now Antonelli's appeared, but is probably more likely for a seat than Antonelli is at this point. There's Pato Award, there's Felipe Drogovic, there's actual F1 point scorer Liam Lawson. That is frankly a ridiculous wealth of talent that's just on the fringes of F1, um, and they're all desperate for a spot as well, and I would imagine a few of them are going to get one. I've probably forgotten big names as well, like there's bound to be more junior drivers and someone will pos pop up in the comments and be like, oh this guy came third in Formula Asia, how could you not name him? And I don't know, I don't watch Formula Asia, is that one Formula? Yeah, Formula Asia, that's where Liam Lawson is, something like that anyway. But anyway. So, we're heading into this incredibly expensive game of musical chairs, and this is where I think it's all going to end up. Alright, so I've said more names than you can remember. I don't blame you, I lost track as well. So let's start by putting some string on the corkboard and filling up the 13 empty seats. Obviously Ferrari and McLaren, they already have their drivers, and that's going to stay how it is in my opinion. So, sorted. Um, so let's start with Red Bull, alongside Max Verstappen. Like I said, I'm assuming Verstappen is still at Red Bull next season. I mean, your guess is as good as mine as to whether he is or not, but I'm going to assume he is. Alongside of him, straight in with a hot take, Fernando Alonso. Now, before you go and at me in the comments, which I know some of you already are, I have a reason for that choice. And I'm going to explain it, and it will make sense. First up, Alonso's pretty much done with F1. It's been his life for 20 years, he isn't getting any younger, and he's been hinting at retirement already this season, okay? Red Bull want a driver for a year, maybe two max. They want someone who's going to keep a seat warm for Liam Lawson or Isaac Hajar, I think is the other one that's in F2 at the moment. Red Bull want a driver that's going to offer a high level of performance and ensure that they win as much as possible. So that's three reasons so far. Number four. Red Bull don't want a complete rookie that's going to get spanked by Verstappen, a la Gasly and Albon. That they don't want to happen, so that's four. Five. Reason number five, Alonso wants a car that can win races, and it's just perfect. It's like five reasons that they're a match made in heaven. And like as a fan, how much I want to see I can't, like, I can't even describe how much I want to see Alonso and Verstappen on the same team, like just for a season just to like just to see them battle on track and the undoubted madness that would come with it but red bull might not want that but i just i just think that it's too perfect not to happen so yeah that's that's red bull now mercedes again verstappen i'm going to ignore the links because i still don't think it's going to happen antonelli not going to happen it's too soon uh he's not ready Vesti, same problem. Too soon, not going to happen. If Mercedes are going to promote any junior drivers, they will end up in a Williams, not in one of their own cars. Simple as that. However, there is another ex-Mercedes junior driver who I think will end up in one of their cars, and that is Esteban Ocon. He was a Mercedes junior driver, he was a reserve driver for them, him and Toto Wolff have history. He would also pay Mercedes to let him drive for them instead of Alpine at the moment, so if they go for him, he's going to be so keen to get there. It's a safe choice for Mercedes. They don't want Carlos Sainz because just doing a straight swap with Ferrari, Hamilton for Sainz, would just knock them so far down the F1 like ladder. I don't think Toto Wolff's ego could take it. So the other options, apart from Ocon and Sainz, they could go for Gasly or Albon. Um, I don't think they'll go for Alex because James Vowles has already made it clear that he'll stand outside the Williams hospitality suite with a shotgun if anyone comes to try and get him, 
and considering Williams are a customer team of Mercedes, you're just going to damage the relationship. And I think then if you've got Gasly or Ocon, just considering the history, I think Ocon's going to be their choice. You could also say maybe Valtteri Bottas. Um, George and Valtteri would be hilarious after the 2021 Imola incident where George is like basically crying in an interview saying that he shouldn't be fighting Valtteri in a Mercedes. Um, I'd love to see them together, but unfortunately not going to happen. Russell and Ocon at Mercedes. On to the last half of the top of the table and Aston Martin. I've already sent Alonso to Red Bull, uh, so he's gone. And unfortunately for everybody, I think Lance Stroll will stay on. Um, assuming his dad doesn't sell the team to the Saudis, he's going to be there still. So who takes over from Alonso is in the question. I'm going to give a rookie a promotion, and I think Felipe Drogovic will get a spot. He went second fastest in first practice at the 2023 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and he was three tenths quicker than Lance Stroll. He was nine tenths slower than Alonso at the Monza practice earlier in the season, but he's been on the sidelines at Aston Martin forever, and it just seems like it's his time. Um, and Formula 1 needs a Brazilian driver as well, so I think Drogovic is going to end up there. Now this is where it starts to get messy. This is where there's like drivers everywhere, teams everywhere, no one's really sure what's happening. So starting off, let's talk about Alpine. I've already said Ocon is gone, so the question is, does Gasly jump ship as well? I think in terms of who's going to replace Ocon, I think Jack Doohan's definitely getting promoted. There was the mess with Piastri. Uh, two seasons ago now, and I don't think Alpine will take that risk again. So I think Jack Doohan will get a seat at Alpine for 2025. Gasly, I think, will go elsewhere just because he will refuse to re-sign a contract with Alpine after how bad it's been while he's been there. Um, so in his place, I think Alex Albon might make the move from Williams. He's not really experienced the terribleness of Alpine at the moment. He wants to move up from Williams, but there's not really a space anywhere else. Alpine want like a good driver, so they'd be willing to pay him out of that last year of his Williams contract. And I think Alex would maybe take a punt on Alpine kind of being a decent midfield team again pretty quickly. I think his faith would be misplaced, but it just seems like the kind of move that would happen. And if Alpine don't get Alex Albon, then they're going to get like Joe Guan Yu, or they're going to have to promote another rookie and have two rookies and... That's just going to be a whole mess. So yeah, I think Alex Albon, Jack Doohan, Alpine. So with Alex gone from Williams, that leaves a space there. And Logan Sargent just doesn't seem like he's going to get another chance. Um, so I'm going to say Williams have two seats to fill. I think Frederick Vesti gets one, assuming Kimi, Andrea Antonelli doesn't win F2, in which case he might get the push. But I think Frederick Vesti of the two Mercedes juniors will be there. Um, and I think Valtteri Bottas is actually going to take the other Williams seat. Sauber have got some big plans, um, and I don't think Bottas is going to have a seat there past the end of this season. And Williams wants someone experienced to go with Vesti so they can kind of keep this like growth thing going on. James Vowles knows Valtteri Bottas, and I think they'd be really happy together. I don't know how much more Bottas has to give to the sport, but I think he's probably not done yet. He's not going to move up from Sauber, that's for sure. So I think Williams is just the sensible home for him, and those two know each other, and it just seems seems like a happy, you know, happy marriage. So obviously that's then Sauber. Bottas is gone. I'm going to say that with confidence, and they don't want Joe Guan Yu either, unfortunately. Obviously they're Sauber at the moment. Audi are going to own 100% of the team pretty soon, and they're thinking like 2026 we're going to be in. It's going to be our name on the car. We want our drivers, and we want to be ready to start fighting at the front. So, instead of Bottas and Joe, they're going to have Carlos Sainz and Nico Hülkenberg. Carlos Sainz, obviously the link's there with his dad. Um, whether he likes it or not, I think he's going to have to go to Sauber, because I don't think there's going to be a space for him anywhere else. Maybe Aston Martin, but I think Sauber's going to be the more sensible destination. And then Nico Hülkenberg, I keep seeing this, that Andreas Seidel and Audi want Nico Hülkenberg. And I think I've read it enough times and heard it enough times now that I'm actually starting to believe it. Like, he is good at Haas. Like, he's better than Kevin Magnussen. He keeps getting into Q3, and the Haas car just isn't, like, racy enough to go any further. And I, I, I don't know. It just, it just seems like it's going to happen at this point. And maybe it's because I've just been gaslighted into believing it after hearing it so many times. But Nico Hülkenberg to Sauber. I'll let it happen. 
So Hass are now without Hulkenberg, and as much as Kevin Magnussen would love to hang on for another season, I think it's probably fair to say his time's now over. Oli Behrman's basically guaranteed a seat, um, and Haas being the Ferrari customer is where he's going to end up. Frederick Vasseur has already said he's like, yep, he's going to be on the grid, um, but Ferrari aren't going to want to lose him, and assuming Hamilton retires in two years' time, which I think is going to happen, uh, that's where Oli Behrman's going to go. So then it's about where does the second seat end up? Joe Granu is without a space, and I actually think he might end up at Haas. It's a toss-up between him and Yuki Tsunoda, who we'll get onto in a second, but I think Joe is a better choice for Haas. He brings a lot of money um, in sponsorship, which Haas want and need. I'm expecting him to get beaten by Behrman, but I think he's shown enough that he deserves a seat, and he's good enough for a seat, but at the same time, he's not good enough to be any higher. You know, he's a solid midfield driver, nothing more, nothing less. Um, yeah, so Haas, Joe Granu, Oli Behrman. And finally, RB, um, who apparently want competitive drivers now, but don't have a car. So they're kind of in this weird position where they want good drivers and to compete for big points. They don't have a car that can do that. It's actually getting worse as each season goes by. But what they do want is Liam Lawson in one of their seats. He obviously had that great spell at the end of last season where he stepped in for Daniel Ricciardo with his broken hand. He took 2024 out. And I think he agreed to do that because Red Bull said to him, we will definitely have you in a car for 2025. Who is he going to replace? I think Daniel Ricciardo is going to get let go. And I think that's going to be the end of Daniel Ricciardo. I think this is the last season we see him on the grid now. And in 2025, they're going to keep Yuki Tsunoda. Um, they, can't just, they can't just have two rookies. That isn't going to work for what RB wants to be. And I think Yuki Tsunoda, well, in fact, I say I think, I know at the moment Yuki Tsunoda is doing better than Daniel Ricciardo. So if you're picking between one of those two drivers to keep on, it's going to be Yuki Tsunoda, I think. And then he's going to be paired with Liam Lawson. I don't know if Yuki's going to get better. I don't know if he's going to help them be a competitive team, but that's what I think it's going to be. So my final 2025 lineup at Red Bull, Verstappen and Alonso, at Ferrari, Hamilton and Leclerc, at McLaren, Norris and Piastri, at Mercedes, Russell and Ocon. At Aston Martin, Stroll and Drogovic. At Sauber, Hulkenberg and Sainz. At Alpine, Gasly, not by choice, just because no one else wants him, and Doohan. Uh, at Williams, Frederick Vesti and Bottas. And then at RB, Sonoda and Liam Lawson. And at Haas, Oli Behrman and Joe Guanyu. Let me know your lineups in the comments. Don't at me on mine. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite confident on this as well, actually. I'm put that on record. I'm confident with that lineup. I was George. This is F1 Reverse, and I'll see you next week on Don't At Me.